Hi, welcome back to Shotoku Tech. In my previous video, we got to install Windows Server 2019 Hyper-V Core on my new PC build. As it turns out, if your Hyper-V server is in a work group, not joined to an Active Directory domain, there's additional work needed on both the server and the client machine in order to manage Hyper-V remotely using Hyper-V. Make sure to look for the links down below in the description there are three articles that I referred to when making this video. I also need to preface this with the fact that you need Windows 10 Pro or Enterprise Edition to be able to perform the steps in this video. First, both the server and the client network profiles need to be set to private. You can see my Windows 10 machines network profile is private by running git network adapter, piping that to git net connection profile in PowerShell. Now on the Hyper-V core server, click past the sconfig window to get to the command window. Now type powershell.exe to launch PowerShell. We run that same git net adapter, git net connection profile, and you can see the network profiles set to public. We need to run the set net connection profile with the interface alias referring to the alias from the output above, followed by the network category private parameter. Okay, now both the server and client network profiles are set to private. Let's continue preparing the server for remote management. In the sconfig window, we can see remote management is already configured as enabled. Now you can enable remote management if needed by using option four. Now we're going to click past sconfig and go back into PowerShell. Here we run enable PS remoting Next, run enable WS man cred SSP with the role server parameter and acknowledge it. That's it for the server configuration. On the Windows 10 client, use run and then type appwiz.cpl and this launches programs and features. Here, you want to click on turn Windows features on or off. Within the Windows features, expand the Hyper-V option and check the Hyper-V Management Tools option. Then you click OK. This takes a while to load. I'm cropping and compressing the video here. Now you can find the Hyper-V Management Console under Windows Administration Tools on the Start menu. We need to do more configuration on the client. So we're going to launch Notepad as Administrator so we can edit the host file. This is under C, Windows, System32, Drivers, etc. You set the file type to all files in order to select the host's file. Now, I don't normally like using host files entries, but in this instance, it's the best option to overcome the fact that remote management and the trusted host thing just gets complicated if you try to use an IP address instead of the host name or fully qualified domain name when accessing the server. The host file entry consists of the IP address, at least two spaces and the host name or fully qualified domain name. I'm adding both. And now we can save the hosts file. From the start menu, launch PowerShell as administrator. We don't really need to enable remote management on the client machine permanently. We just start the WinRM service. Next, we add our Hyper-V server to WSMAN trusted hosts by running set item 
WS man, local host, client, trusted host, with the value, fully qualified domain name of the Hyper-V server. And my server name is st-hype01.local in this instance. And we need to acknowledge this. Then we can stop the WinRM service. Now we can test PowerShell remoting by running the invoke command who am I, computer name sthype.local, with the credentials of the local administrator for the server. And here we see the output from the who am I command. So PowerShell remoting is working. Let's launch our Hyper-V management console and try to connect to the Hyper-V server. Open Hyper-V management console. Click on connect to server. I'm entering the fully qualified domain name of my Hyper-V server. Next, you click on connect as another user. Enter the Hyper-V server administrator credentials. And when you click OK, you get this message. The computer's not configured to allow delegation of user credentials. Clicking OK just yields another error saying CRED SSP is currently disabled and you must be an administrator to enable it. I toyed around with this for a while to no avail. So I'm going to close and reopen the Hyper-V console. And in PowerShell, I'm going to go ahead and check that the trusted host command actually ran correctly. So we start the WinRM service and we run get item WS man local host client trusted hosts. And we see that's in trusted host. So we'll try connecting to the Hyper-V server again in Hyper-V management console. And you got to add the uh, local administrator credentials for the Hyper-V server. And we get this really long error message. But you see at the bottom of the message, it tells you exactly what you need to do. We need to run gpedit.msc to configure credentials delegation. We're editing the local group policy on this machine. Run gpedit.msc and in the group policy editor we're going to navigate to administrative templates system and credentials delegation I'm gonna widen this out so we can see it a little better there we go credentials delegation you see allow delegating fresh credentials is enabled and we see the FQDN of my Hyper-V server has a WS man service principal name entered here. This was the result of adding the Hyper-V server to trusted hosts that we did previously. I'm adding the SPN for the host name as well. We also need to enable and add these same service principal names to the allow delegating fresh credentials with NTLM only server authentication. This is the next item below in this group policy settings. Okay, both policies are enabled with the FQDN and host name WS man service principal names entered in the service list for these policies. Looks good. I'm going to close and reopen Hyper-V again just to be safe. Let's connect to the server and we're going to use the credentials of that server's local administrator. Also, make sure to click Remember Me and click OK and OK again. It prompts me to enable delegation of credentials again. I don't get an error after that. And after a few seconds, we finally connect our Hyper-V management console to our Hyper-V server with both the server and the client in a work group.
Now I have both PowerShell and the Hyper-V management console available to use for managing my lab. I look forward to your comments down below. Give this video a like. And before you go on to watch more of my server administration videos, please click on subscribe. Thank you very much.